how's everybody doing today and as you can see we are rebuilding the chicago white Sox. if you guys enjoyed today's rebuild make sure you hit that like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content and as always in the comment section let me know which team we should do next and also what you guys thought about this rebuild i think with the white Sox, they got a lot of young players who should develop pretty quickly and also they got a couple decent players we could build around so the roster we're using for today is the best since osfm update it's by b Pern 113 b Pern 113 or b Pern 113 however you want to pronounce it but best since osfm update um it's one of the highest downloaded rosters in the vault currently so let's get into today's rebuild i'm actually kind of excited about the white Sox. they have eloy jimenez michael kopeck some good pitching prospects so we're looking like with team that we have a, a decent like foundation to build on it's just in real life they put all their eggs in one basket trying to sign machado it didn't work out so now they're left with some holes they really just kind of you know they, they they have a lot of question marks and they're just not going to be a good team this season i don't think so carlos rodon i'm i'm looking forward to seeing him just continue to progress he's he's going to stick around Ivan Nova is more of a one-year pitcher. Um, he only has a one-year contract. If we can get something for him, even better. Irving Santana, kind of the same thing. You know, one-year pitcher. If we can find some a trade for him and like get something in return that will help us for a couple seasons, might as well try to do that. Reynaldo Lopez, Lucas Giolito. We'll see how they develop. If they develop nicely, um, we'll have to see. Reynaldo Lopez came over from the Nationals, I believe it was. Um, and he just, you know, hasn't really lived up to the hype just yet michael kopak in real life is coming off of tommy john surgery so he's not pitching this season but we'll see how he develops hopefully he can feature in this rebuild we also have alec hansen and dylan cease um carson fulmer i don't think he's ever going to live up to the potential in real life but he's also a prospect that we do have in the farm system looking at relievers there are a couple names here that i'm cool keeping kelvin herrera i'll try to probably keep even though he's on a one-year deal uh jace fry in real life turns out to be a pretty decent reliever so we'll, and also in this one he you know he's almost an 80 he's got beat potential so he's looking like a decent um reliever for us nate jones might be a player i look to trade just because he's kind of at that age where you'll slowly start to see a decrease in overall and because he has a good overall and a good potential he's got a little bit of trade value alex cologne will keep him for now we'll see how he goes um see how he performs catching wise we're fine for now but if they start to decrease, then we'll probably start to look for a different catcher. Our DH is set with Jose Abreu. DeAndre Alonso is a player that I'm looking to replace. Probably find someone a little bit younger that we can stick at first base. Second base, Yomer Sanchez. He's not bad. You know, decent overall. You know, mid-20s, B potential. We also do have Nick Madrigal, who I'm hoping we can see feature in this franchise. Um, he should be really good. You know, he's definitely got some hype around him in real life. I think he could definitely think he could definitely take over the second base spot in the future for the White Sox. Yohan Moncada, ever since he came from the Red Sox, hasn't really lived up to the hype. Struck out over 200 times last season, isn't hitting the ball well, but I'm hoping in this franchise he can show his potential and turn into an absolute beast. Tim Anderson, we'll have to see how he develops. You know, mid 20, 70 overall, a potential he should develop, but we'll have to see. You know, decent hitting stats, decent fielder. So we'll see how things go. Um, left field, Daniel Polka will probably be our starter um, for the most part, just for that power. Adam Engels looked probably a player I'm looking to replace. Luis Robert possibly features in this uh, rebuild. He's got a decent amount of hype around him in real life. But the big one, Eloy Jimenez should turn into a beast for this rebuild. 22 years old, 74 overall, a potential. I'm really hyped about him starting in left field. So with that being said, we're looking at probably letting the first season go by pretty quickly making a couple trades just to kind of start finding more pieces to build the team around getting rid of some of these big one-year contracts and get players in return for them um i'm looking at like ivan uh or ivan nova yonder alonzo maybe nate jones because they all hit free agency they don't hit arbitration um irving santana john jay maybe find some uh ways to get rid of these bigger contracts that are only one years get some players that we can build around that'll stay for more than one season and we should be good so let's make some trades and let's get this rebuild started all right first trade we're doing is with the cardinals for carlos martinez the starting pitcher b potential 27 years old 86 overall good stats all around the board um helps us out with that starting pitching and in return we're gonna send irving santana carson fulmer and also randall delgado one of our better relievers one of our starting uh, five and also a player who 
has good potential decent trade value but won't ever feature in this rebuild so this is a trade that works for us already the next trade we're making is for trey turner and you're probably thinking but you have tim anderson at shortstop why why do that well we can move tim anderson the third or even second and then let trey turner play that shortstop position good hitter good speed decent fielder you know good age good potential good overall for yomer sanchez who i know is at a good rating um for a rebuild you know he's at a good overall good potential good age but if we can get someone better for him in return and is also a starter this is definitely worth it um we're also trading uh jose rondon who's one of our prospects for shortstop who, who has you know looks like a decent future with based on his overall and potential and then we are getting one of, rid of one of our three pitching prospects that looked really good um nate jones as well as um alfredo gonzalez and the right fielder ryan cordell for archie bradley basically we're getting a younger setup man in archie bradley all right we're going to the rangers for our new first baseman ronald guzman 24 years old b potential 71 overall decent fielding kind of subpar hitting um based on his stats but we're getting rid of amado nunez uh nicky delmonico who we don't really need like three mlb left fielders currently and then yonder alonzo who makes way for guzman so we we basically made the team a little bit younger this is the way our pitching rotation looks for the first season carlos martinez rodon nova lopez and giolito really i'm looking for everybody but nova to increase nova's kind of just a pitcher i'm sticking in there for the first season um but i want everybody else to start to develop a little bit more and we definitely should have a decent starting rotation going forward we also have kopech in the farm system looking at our bullpen i'm still looking for players to replace bummer um unless bummer develops into a decent uh long reliever then we don't have to worry about that calvin herrera we'll kind of see how he does for this first season if he does well we'll try to sign him again if not we'll probably look to replace him jace fry i'm hoping does well juan Minea, i'm hoping turns out to be at least like a mid 80s low 80s reliever who performs well archie bradley i have high hopes for a potential high 70s overall it's 26 good rating and then alex cologne i'm hoping will be our closer um maybe even swap these two and let bradley be our closer cologne be our setup man we'll, we'll have, probably start like that and then looking at the lineups this is how we're looking turner uh Lurie garcia in center just because he hits uh oh wait yeah just because he hits a little bit better uh breu polka eloy jimenez guzman castillo moncada and tim anderson so this is the way we're looking you can see tim anderson went up a little bit in rating mostly because i made him a second baseman uh, when you make players second baseman they usually go up in rating a little bit and because he's gonna be playing second base i figured we should probably just move him there to begin with so that's the team for season one i'll see you guys at draft day already heading into the draft we have the third pick and none of the yeah none of these guys were oh actually he he was he was actually one that I had my eye on. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but let's get a player for the first round. We're going to go with Cy Walker here, the closing pitcher. Um, I almost went for Carlo Ortiz based on his hitting stats. And he also has good strength and plate vision and discipline. So it looks more of like a hitting catcher compared to a defensive catcher. But I feel like the closing pitcher is probably the best option. That first baseman going is actually really disappointing because I, I actually really wanted him. Um, especially since we may end up needing a first baseman once Abreu starts to decrease in rating. We're going to go with another catcher here, Ronan Hollins. Um, I have no more scouted players, which is, again, unfortunate. We're going to take, T uh, yeah, we'll take Tino Valido out of Mexico. Heading into the fourth round, let's see if we can get someone else that lo looks pretty decent. We're going to take a risk with another catcher. I know we're going catcher heavy here, but one of them have to pan out, right? Wes Bayshore. Um, he's actually one of the better looking prospects anyways. So, um, yeah, we'll go with that. All righty, Bobby Chu's been here for a while. I know it's, he's not going to pan out to be an 80-80 player. I also looked at Nelson Benitez, but Bobby Chu's been here the whole draft. Might as well take a shot, a shot in the dark. And since he's still here, we'll take Nelson Benitez. Let's go see how this draft went. So this was the best first round pick out of the draft. Alfredo Manuel, the starting pitcher. And when I looked at his stats, like I had him, I think I'm pretty sure I had him scouted. When I looked at his stats, 
I wasn't too impressed with them, but I was wrong. It had definitely hurt us. So looking at our picks, we have Cy Walker, overall of a 66, but a potential of 93. And then uh, Tino Valido, another starting pitcher, 63 overall with 90 potential, um, is pretty solid. The catcher thing didn't really work out. Both of them, 70 overalls. Ronan Hollis is a 48 overall with 79 potential. And then Wes Bayshore, 62 overall with a 72 potential. Um, Bobby Chu actually wasn't horrible. He's got 85 potential and he's 68 overall. And then our last pick, Nelson Benitez, 72 potential with a 58 overall. So not the best, best, not the best of drafts, um, but a couple decent players in Cy Walker, Tino Bolito, and Bobby Chu. Alrighty, at the deadline, you can see we're five games behind the Indians in uh, in the Central. The wild card were about similar spot, similar spot, four and a half games out. Um, so the season's going by pretty, or not going by pretty well, but it's it's going decently. You know, uh, we are twentieth ranked. We have the second best speed. Contact is nineteenth. Power is thirteenth. Pitching is sixteenth, and defense is twenty third. Alrighty, so at the end of season one, basically, when I went at the trade deadline, I didn't really see. I didn't really see any players that I wanted to trade for. And at the same time, um, I couldn't really make a trade that wouldn't. So I, the trades that I wanted to make required us to trade away some players that I didn't want to get rid of. Um, so I felt that let's just get through season one, see how the team played as a whole. And let's get into it. So you see, we finished 500. Um, in the standings, that meant we were eight games behind in the central and six games out in the wild card so even though we finished 500 wasn't too bad in terms of where we finished in the standings looking at the team as a whole trey turner hit 237 and his overall went down which is not good i want him to be our leadoff hitter i want him to hit the ball well i want him to be our starting shortstop going forward but that's not promising adam angle actually had a high on base percentage decent slugging and ops the average was a, a little bit low but he's continuing to go up. He might be an 80 or close to it by the time the season starts. Jose Abreu, I'll bring him back if he doesn't want 16 million. If we can get him for a little bit cheaper, then I'll probably bring him back. Um, he look, He's a great DH, but for 16 million, I don't know if I can just, you know, shell that much out. Daniel Polka had a horrible season in terms of average on base percentage and stuff. But home runs and ribbies, he was pretty productive there. Eloy Jimenez is up to a 75 and hit 250 on the year. 24 homers, 56 RBIs. If he can get that average up a little bit higher, I will definitely be happy about that. Um, Ronald Guzman, 230 average. Hit 33 bombs, though. Um, on base percentage, should be a little bit higher. Obviously, the average needs to go up as well. Um, Wellington Castillo hit 316. So he might be a catcher that I try to keep on a yearly basis, like a one-year contract. Um, as long as he continues to perform. Yoan Moncada hit 281. That is what I want to see. 281. That is awesome. He's up to an 83. And he's looking like our third baseman for the future. And Tim Anderson. If he can bring that average up to like a 270. Um, that's kind of my benchmark. If you can hit 270 and above. You're definitely performing quite well. James McCann, our backup catcher. Didn't do too horribly. Um, you know, a 265 average for a backup. You know, a catcher who probably didn't see that many at bats. Luri Garcia hit 237, which isn't good. And Ramon Torres hit 212 in his limited appearances. Pitching wise, Carlos Martinez, high ERA, um, high runs. Obviously, he didn't pitch as much last season. But going off of the previous like full season that he did pitch, it's pretty comparable. Um, strikeouts numbers were a little low. Um, ERA was a little bit higher as well. So hopefully he we can we can you know see some improvements in that area. Carlos Rodon. Again, another high ERA, but he's hitting 200 innings pitched. Um, we don't really have a full season to like compare to. So this was kind of a season to see growth and we'll like, compare it going forward. Ronaldo Lopez, um, he's going up in rating. He's in 83, you know, comparing it to last season, pretty, you know, I see improvements, more strikeout or one more strikeout, even though he pitched more innings. Um, hits went up a little bit, runs went up. 
margin like a little bit as well everything went up a little bit era did go down though so that's good and lucas giolito is almost an 80 and compared to last season it was a definite improvement looking at the bullpen bummer has gone up to a 75 so okay um kelvin herrera has kind of stayed the same had a little bit of an off year it looks like um jace fry is up to an 83 which is awesome to see um compared to last season um, he kept it the same, but added more innings. So that's good to see ERA went down as well. Juan Meneas, mm, that's not good. That's not good at all. Alex Colom, 87 overall. Um, I was wondering if I should sign him or not. But based on his stats, he's looking like our setup guy, um, especially with the 2.06 ERA. And Archie Bradley's looking like our closer. 2.7 ERA, 43 saves. And it's looking like this is the guy that we want on the mound whenever we need a club like we ever need that save situation quickly let's look at the roster for the um starting pitchers Kopex is 74 hansen's a 71. um those are really the only ones we have there and any other standout players madrigal is a 71 so he might be a player that next season he hits the mid 70s and then by season three he's definitely in the starting lineup um luis robert is another player to keep our eye on 67 overall so that's really about it we definitely have some players to look out for robert robert madrigal kopek um we definitely have some pieces to build around in this team um the playoff bracket looks like this uh my oh the reds okay uh my pick is going to be the astros Let's see. The Indians. Okay. Oh. All right. The Indians defeated the Nationals. Already for arbitration. You guys can see here. These uh, five got it out of the, the rest of the team. Contracts wise. Polka did so bad. But I don't know if we can get another left fielder right now. And we can always trade for one. So I think everybody's going to get a contract. Um. So yeah, that's that's how things are going there. To start season two, I made some free agency acquisitions. Um, these are mostly to fill free agency pickup, like the not to fill free agency, to fill the minor league roster from the players that we let go. Um, most of the time when I let go of players, they're low potential, low overall players. And I try to look in the free agency for like 70s with C potential um or even uh low like low 60s with b potential to fill the roster up a little bit so um once season two started and i got to the regular season these are the players that i like kind of saw or i picked up late in free agency d potential but in free agency a 74 overall um it looks like a regen player or a draft pick that wasn't selected he looks like a player who even if he hits mid 70s not a bad little player to pick up who knows his potential could even go up as he is still pretty young um the other player connor joe um he's a left fielder 80 overall c potential we did need another left fielder in real life i don't know if he'll ever live up to that potential but we'll have to see and he also kind of helps us out you also do see the big acquisition that i did acquire in free agency marcel ozuna i wasn't sold on daniel polka last season even though he did develop a little bit his hitting stats just aren't good enough he's hitting like 220 and that's just not good enough marcelo zuna was just too good to pass up i know he's 29 but i definitely think he's still a decent little pickup for us and then the last one was i'm already forgetting who our last signing was that i showed you guys brent white i already showed you it was eric porter but what position did he play let me look that up again because i forgot already eric porter was a right fielder um i thought oh yeah I, I thought so eric eric porton i was looking for porter that's why i didn't see it 70 overall c potential not not a little bad pickup um even if he doesn't turn into like an amazing player we still have a 70 overall that could have a decent trade value so those are the big ones all right we're trading daniel polka to the giants for reyes moranta we need some bullpen help so let's go and try to figure out what we're going to do with the team a little bit more all right tim anderson and taquan forbes um i think is a, a low prospect in our uh system or even someone assigned for to fill up the roster is going to the reds for eugenio suarez 28 years old he's locked up for the future and just had a, had a good season last year 
good season of the year before and also his stats just look really good obviously now Yohan Moncada can move back to second base I just wasn't set on Tim Anderson all right so to start this season this is how we're looking Moncada Turner Osuna, Abreu, Suarez, Ilo Jimenez, Wellington Castillo, Adam Engel, and Ronald Guzman. Um, pitching wise, we're looking a little bit stronger. Carlos Martinez and Rodon definitely improved over the offseason, along with Reynaldo Lopez, Giolito, and Kopech is making, you know, like his first full season, hopefully, this year. Bummer, Minea. I'm not sold on Minea. But for right now, this is how our bullpen is going to look. I'll probably try to look for another addition at the deadline day if things aren't going. We also have Maranta, Colom, and Bradley. So that's the team. Um, We'll have to see how it goes. I'm hoping it goes well. Fingers crossed. See you guys at deadline day. Alrighty, so at the deadline day, you guys can see 69 and 39. We have a 10 game lead. We are the sixth ranked team in the majors. Sixth in content contact sixth in power eighth in pitching 21st in defense and 15th in speed the season's going a lot better than i anticipated i i was thinking you know maybe we'd be fighting for the number two spot um and definitely getting into the wild card but this season is going unreal looking at our draft picks by the cpu you guys can see johnny rutledge a catcher 45 overall um 87 potential so they did a little bit better than i did Jimmy Carvajal, another catcher, 46 overall with a potential. He's got 90 potential. And then the rest, you know, a, li a little weak. Uh, Ken Walton, 56 overall with 73 potential. Um, a 70 overall catcher, Kurt Schultz with uh, 75 potential. So he could possibly be a backup next season. We'll have to see. And then Tom Burnett, 53 overall with 78 potential. I think it said, yeah. So decent picks. Nothing too crazy, but I just wanted to show you guys how we're standing at the deadline day. As you can see, 162 on the year. We won the division and taking on the Astros in the division series. So the season was a complete turnaround. We won 19 more games than we did the season before. And I guess I can't say it was a complete turnaround because the previous season we missed the, the wild card by like five games, which isn't that much. We won our division by 17 games and it's looking like the team is doing pretty well trey turner's led the league in doubles and carlos martinez won or had the best era and war um awards wise you guys can see mvp was carlos martinez and he also won the cy young so i guess he had a pretty solid season looking at the team as a whole you guys can see the lineup is looking very nice 89 for Johan moncada he hit 266 so maybe that leadoff spot isn't for him so maybe we'll have to tweak the lineup a little bit. Trey Turner, a bounce back year for sure. He's looking like that shortstop that we wanted him to be when we traded for him. Marcelo Zuna, whew, this is a solid pickup. He had even a better year than last year in terms of home runs. Run or Runs batted in a little bit lower, um, more walks, just a couple more strikeouts. A average was just about 300. Um, so you know what? that's that, so far so good jose abreu is still continuing to like uh what's the word i'm looking for deliver he's continuing to deliver uh provides the runs he took a little bit less strikeout or walks struck out a little bit more but average on base percentage slugging percentage ops looks really good a eugenio suarez potential's gone down a little bit but um even though he didn't have a better year in terms of average he still was pretty consistent and you know 271 is still not a bad average 263 for Eloy he's up to a 79 um but his numbers went up in terms of average on base percentage and uh that's that's it actually so and his ribbies but you know what I want him to continue to improve so as long as these stats are going up that's what I want to see Wellington Castillo he's an 82 he's still hitting around 300 so good I like when my catchers hit about 300 and they do their job um, angle. I just don't know what to do with him because he's 80 overall. But at the same time, he doesn't hit the ball that great. And then Ronald Guzman's the same situation. I was hoping he would hit the ball well, but he's hitting 230. It's just not working out. And then James McCann, Connor Joe, and Ramon Torres there. 
had okay seasons nothing too crazy now let's look at the pitching because it's looking like the pitching did pretty well carlos martinez 21 and 6 224 innings he is a workhorse and 244 era 1.2 whip allowed 60 runs 61 runs that is amazing carlos rodon is up to an 89 so he's just right behind martinez and even he had a very good year sub 3 era 218 strikeouts 220 innings solid season Reynaldo lopez he's in 87 so our one two threes high rated and they did pretty well 200 innings as well era is a little bit higher than the other two but i mean i'm not gonna complain um michael kopex in 84 so i think our starting rotation is set we just need the you know the stats to get a little bit better era to drop just a little bit and overall we're looking good giolito even as a five starter he looks solid a sub four era bummer in the long relief role seems to be doing an okay job he didn't pitch as much this year Manea had a decent bounce back year um dropped his era by two and uh that's solid to see chase jace fry um pretty comparable year to last year so not bad at all reyes maranta even better than the year before um he pitched 60 more innings but uh, and obviously he's gonna allow more runs but you know a sub three era a sub 2.5 era alex colom is still doing well in the setup role um and then archie bradley who he is a must pick up if you need a closer in a sim style franchise something about him he just always does really well quickly let's look at the roster see if any of our prospects are doing well alec hansen is doing well bobby chu cody medeiros see potential but that's all right Dylan Peters, who we signed in free agency, is up to a 68. Tino Valido is a 67. Ooh. Okay. Our closer, Cy Walker, is a 70, so he's just jumping up. Justin Connor. Okay. Um, anybody else? Casey Gillespie is up to a 67. Madrigal is a 75, so he might be jumping into the major league roster next year. Brent White, the guy we signed in free agency, changed from D to a C potential. Uh, Ramon Torres is a 78, so he's continuing to grow. Connor Joe was a guy we signed, but he's, you know, actually gone down. Luis Robert is a 70, and then Eric Porton, who we signed, is up to a 71. But that, I mean, we're we're seeing growth in the players. We're looking pretty solid in terms of everyone going up in rating, and the team still being kind of young. And uh, I let's just see how the playoffs go. Ooh, not not a good start. Um, okay. Ooh. 2-2 two, two. we're getting into it it's uh whew. who would have thought who would have thought season two i was expecting season three would have been the year we like made it into the playoffs but this team is just killing it all right so moncada is kind of having trouble in that leadoff spot so let's see if we can switch it up here trey turner gets on moncada strikes out and then a double play to end the inning that's unfortunate all right abreu suarez eloy really one two three no a three run lead for the at four run lead for the astros yikes okay castillo brings us you know within three now i'll take that martinez what's going on here all right a double can we get it with two run ah, two outs i should have said all right, I think uh, Carlos Martinez is done for the day, which is unfortunate to see. Really, this is uh, not going too well. So unless we mount a massive comeback, we are in some trouble. And it's, it's looking a little unlikely for sure. Double play gets us out of it there we go reyes maranta and it's looking like our bats have gone pretty quiet here hmm. okay eloy brings us to a five run ball game uh, let's see if we can get second no he doesn't get second i don't know why i tried that Alrighty, heading into the eighth we're very limited on our chances of coming back reyes maranta goes to what three innings Pfft, okay Alrighty. Five runs here. Can we do it? All right. No, we've been eliminated. That is, man, a hundred win season, and we didn't make it out of the first round of the playoffs. 
Well, let's see who wins the playoffs. The Cubs defeated the Yankees, but you know what? We won 19 more games. I'm feeling very confident heading into season three. So let's see how season three goes. And let's get it started. All right, so we're going to the Dodgers for Albert Almora Jr. And you're probably thinking, why would I trade away a center fielder who's uh, the same rating as a, like the one we're training for? So why am I trading Angle, who's 80, for Albert Almora Jr., who's 80? Well, Albert Almora is younger. His contract's going to be cheaper. Actually, I think it's about the same. It's a little bit cheaper. He's on arbitration. He's younger. He should grow. And Adam Angle just isn't hitting the ball that great. Um, and Almora's contact numbers are a little bit better. And then we're trading away Bobby Chu, the first round, uh, or not the first round, but one of our later round draft picks in the season one. Um, but we still have Hanson. We still have Peters um, and Valido. And he was the only way we could get this trade to go through. And I'm hoping that um, it helps out with the hitting. We just it seemed to go quiet in the playoffs. Connor Pilkington's another player that we're trading away. We still have some good pitching prospects that I'm looking forward to seeing develop throughout this season. But once I add Almora into the team, you guys will be able to see what our team is looking like this season. And again, it's looking pretty similar to last season, obviously. But I'm, I'm confident in what you know what we have Turner Moncada Ozuna Suarez Abreu Eloy Wellington Castillo Connor Joe and Almora Jr. So this is our bench I brought up Madrigal because you know he's mid 70s and he should start to develop pretty quickly Justin O'Connor was the catcher that I saw developed quite well last season he's gonna be our backup and then we obviously still have Ramon Torres pitching rotation wise it's the exact same um, Lucas Giolito might be a player that I try to find a new uh, starter for, but overall, the bullpen looks strong and our starting rotation looks really, really strong too. So not too many changes are being made for season three. Hopefully we do better and we make it past the first round of the playoffs this time. Alrighty, so 108 and 54 and we're taking on the athletics in the division series. So again, a very good season. So looking at the standings, we were 29 games ahead in the Central, and we are ranked the third best team with first in contact, 10th contact, power, 6th pitching, 19th defense, and 21st speed. Um, league leaders, Ozuna and Trey Turner, um, respect, you know, doubles for Ozuna, stolen bases for Turner, and then Giolito had the best winning percentage, okay, and Archie Bradley had the most saves. Looking at the awards, Archie Bradley had the delivery man of the year. So, okay, definitely take that. Looks like the team did very well. So let's look at it as a whole. Carlos Martinez is up to a 94, a 20 and six record. Again, 200 innings, a little bit more earned runs allowed, but um, still a very solid season. Reynaldo Lopez is up to a 90. So he's our number two. And you can see he has definitely picked it up the most innings of his career. Best ERA. Least amount of runs. Whew. Carlos Rodon, 85. Okay, a little bit back down to earth for him, but still, you know, as a threes pitcher, a pretty respectable ERA and pretty decent season. Michael Kopeck. Huh. What's going to happen with him? Because I want him to continue to develop and he should develop into a good pitcher. So hopefully, hopefully he does well. 17 and 4 for Giolito, 200 innings. And this is his best season by far. And, it, you know, like just a solid season. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the way the pitching is looking. Aaron Bummer. Again, a, that's a good season. You know, better than last year. More innings pitched. Um, it looks like Dylan Peters was brought up to help towards the end of the season. Didn't go too well. Um, Juan Minea is up to an 87. He had his best season of his career. And Okay. Reyes Maranta is looking like a good pickup as well. Um, he's up to an 88. But as I say that, li, 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 oh my gosh, less innings, but the same amount of earned runs and his ERA went up. But, hmm, okay, Jace Fry. Whew, lights out for Jace Fry. Holy cow. I mean, five losses, but look at these numbers. Whew, 10 earned runs. Alex Colom, oh, what a setup, man. He's been for us a 1-9 ERA. And Archie Bradley is a 97. 
and he was he was lights out as well 53 saves four blown saves 10 earned runs over 50 innings that is unreal to think about looking at the lineup trey turner is a 90 he's our leadoff man hit 287 on the year um 23 homers okay 3 354 on base percentage so on base percentage and average went down a little bit but still solid moncada's a 92 had his best season um in terms of run production 35 homers 103 ribbies average dipped a little bit on base percentage is almost identical but slugging and ops went up marcelo zuna's a 94 still and he had a solid season almost com you know basically the same from last year more rbis though on base percentage went up slugging and ops went up eugenio suarez is looking like he's starting to starting to dip a little bit but still a pretty comparable year to last season jose abreu is still just hitting the ball very well and he's proving to be a solid dh almost identical to last season eloy jimenez 83 and our starting right fielder is not going anywhere best season so far and he's really starting to find his stride almora jr has only gone up one rating but he is just a better hitter and that's really what i was looking for connor joe's you know starting to slowly go down as expected i wasn't expecting too much for him and he's actually still performing pretty well wellington castillo is still hitting around 300 so he's he's proven to be a solid uh catcher for us ronald guzman is up to a 79 had his best season in terms of average on base percentage slugging and ops and i mean home runs and ribbies weren't there but obviously he clearly didn't have as many at bats as previous seasons um but he's you know that, that's what i want to see i want to see slow improvements slow improvements um madrigal hit 216 justin o'connor our backup catcher didn't hit the ball too well he's more of a defensive specialty and ramon torres hit 260 so madrigal is looking like he's he's potentially kind of ready to slowly earn some more reps i think it's more of for the future he'd probably help suarez leave moncada move back to third and then madrigal would take over at second um looking at the team hansen's up to a 75 Medeiros is a 74 but i don't know if he'll improve too much more Valido, Valido is a 70 holy smokes his stats don't look too great um just yet so i'd let him sit in the mi minors for a few more season but for a draft pick whoo he's looking good um our bullpen is probably the area we'd have to look into uh starting to get some more prospects cy walker is looking like our closer for the future he's just looking really good catcher wise we got a couple decent young players uh coming up especially down here hopefully they would develop quickly uh first base you know okay second base we have corbello and madrigal um third base we'd probably have to start looking for someone unless moncada moved over and madrigal took over for second uh snowden was a guy we found in free agency he's not doing too great um we got these guys here as well and then looking at the team comstock was another guy we signed in free agency he's looking like a decent little pickup you guys can see he's just a free agent nothing too crazy robert is looking like he's gonna start to grow so for the future it's looking like our center field spot is you know pretty deep in terms of players we could use and then um obviously jimenez is our starting right fielder for the future here's the playoff picture i want to get out of the first round so badly and we are down 0-2. How come whenever we have like the best team ever, we always just get destroyed in the playoffs? We're gonna let Rodon. Actually, we're gonna let Kopek go. I, I have a good feeling about this. So a double, okay. Ozuna flies out, but Suarez drive him in. He doesn't. Okay. I said I had a good feeling about this, and it's not looking great. Abreu. Jimenez, Almora, come on, somebody just do something. Do something, please. Anybody, a hit, a run. Man, this, this athletic team is nice. Arcia, Chapman, Mookie Betts, Matt Olsen, Chris Davis, Yonder Alonson, Brinson, Alfaro. That's a solid team. Kopech's getting a little tired. A single, okay. Fielder's choice, gross. And a double play. Horrible. Yonder Alonso stole second. You let Yonder Alonso with four speed steal second. Uh. All right. Anybody. 
I was that the fourth double play of the game for us. Oh boy, I, I that that might be it. That definitely was it. That was the dagger right there. Holy smokes, we are getting rocked. What is going on? more double plays all right here we go guy on first two outs game over we're out of the playoffs again oh my god all right who's gonna win who's gonna win who's gonna win the phillies defeat the angels so that that just what happened 91 200 zero 11 at bats. Marcelo Zuna didn't get a hit. Pff, what? Are, are you serious? Abreu was the only... Okay. Abreu and Connor Joe was the only one who hit above 200. I'm sorry. What? I just like this. No wonder why we didn't win. That is disgust. That is horrible. Oh, man. Well, I mean, let's see. Looking at the team as a whole, I, I still I am still pretty happy with the way the team turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild. Pitching-wise, I think we look really, really good. Um, Lineup-wise, we have a couple older players. Ozuna's going to start to hit 30. Eugenio's close to 30. Abreu's obviously in his 30s already. Um, Castillo's in his 30s. But I feel like we have the players to replace him. Ronald Guzman's there. Um, Madrigal could take over for the second base spot. Moncada can move to third. And then uh, Ozuna, I still think he's got a couple years left in him. Wellington Castillo, I still think he's got a couple years left in him. Jose Abreu is still solid too. So I still think this team's set for the future. And I really like this team. Um, the White Sox in, for a franchise. I'm waiting for a good roster that come out that I can trust. Like the OSFM rosters. And I'm thinking the White Sox are going to be my franchise team. If you guys have any other suggestions, let me know in the comment section below. But when you guys say which team you guys would like me to do a franchise in, um, like say, hey, you should do a franchise series with the team rather than, hey, rebuild this team. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you are new and enjoy the content. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.